I think the, there is no organization uh, like the Bodleian. Um, it's a very special place. Um, it has 50 plus libraries within the system and then you have all the college libraries so you can think of it as a library system for a small, smaller country like maybe Denmark uh, packed into one town. It's it's a it's a it's a huge system and it's a very um, rich system in terms of uh, resources available in physical and digital form. One of the most amazing things about the history of the Bodleian is that almost from its foundation in 1602, our buildings have failed to keep up with the growth of our collections. Uh, almost 10 years ago now, when we had completely run out of any space, we stored over two and a half million books in salt mines in Cheshire. We were able to build a new storage facility uh, 25 miles to the west of here, just outside of Swindon, uh, to the most uh, exacting standards and that uh, building has been available to us for two years now. We have um, just under eight million books stored in it and between two and three thousand books a day travel in each direction between the storage facility and the central Oxford libraries. And managing it um, is, a, yeah, is, a, is, is a quite a huge logistic task. Um, you can think of it as an operation like a DHL or something like that. We have people in town who are ordering things. We have uh, trucks running between uh, Swindon and here twice a day delivering to the different libraries. So for example, we're able to scan material from the book storage facility directly to the desktop of our users. And um, so it's part of a continuing innovation in service, which um, you still need the physical inf infrastructure to do. Because we have our new book storage facility, we no longer need to keep so much material in central Oxford. So that's given us the opportunity to reuse some of that space to give access to not just the community inside the university, but the citizens of Oxford more generally, and also the many thousands of visitors who come to Oxford with more space and, and, and better quality that building, which has been known for 80 years as the new Bodleian Library, but will become the Western Library, it was really designed by Giles Gilbert Scott as being essentially just a place for storing collections, and it was deliberately designed to keep the public, and indeed to keep the scholars, out of that building. And of course, we're in a different uh, phase of development for the Bodleian now. If, if you go to the libraries, you will see students, so not necessarily interacting with the books and journals, the digital materials, but using the library as a space to learn. And the same is true for research. Um, so what we need is um, to provide flexible spaces and open spaces. And so this new blend of uh, storage, preservation and research, that will give us a new opportunity to um, reshape our services to meet the demands of the contemporary age. Over the past uh, 20 years, the world of information has changed dramatically with the explosion of digital information. And there have been doom, uh, doom mongers uh, throughout that period predicting the death of the book and the death of the library and the death of the librarian. Um, but of course, uh, that has been completely uh, disproven by the reality of what's happened, which has been a complete renewal in the role of the librarian and uh, to some extent a, a, a reconfirmation by users that libraries continue to be not only important but essential parts of the information environment and the librarian continues to adapt and to uh, develop their skills to meet those new demands. Mm -hmm.